curious and curiouser, isn't it? It does. <coughs> it does. Is was Alice, right? Yeah, Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland. Curious and curious. It's it's a phrase I find myself using quite a bit because I think that you know, having studied some of these traditions and engaged in some of these practices, I think I thought that there was going to be implicitly I thought there was going to be an end point to it. Mm. Mm. And I thought that there was going to be a kind of, uh, you know, release from the kind of work that I was doing mm -hmm. in order to leave behind the version of myself that mm. I was before. Mm. And instead, in my own humble experience, things just get kind of stranger and <laughs> deeper. <laughs> curiouser. And, and curiouser. curiouser. And I think that it's really important to talk about that yeah. because this language of awakening makes it seem like you just like kind of rub your eyes and go, oh, and you were there, and, and you awake. were there, and you, you know, it's Wizard of Oz time or something, you know, right. uh, like that you wake up and then you're just, you know, done. Yeah. But it, it, it's actually much better news than that, I would say. Yeah, and, and it is uh, impossible to anticipate or describe accurately. I mean, I was I was so completely wrong on what I thought it would be like when love when you know that never stopped. So much that you wanted your money back. You were no, like, <laughs> no but it, it was so much better than I could have yeah. imagined it. But I had read lots of Tomic things, yeah. right? and I assumed it was going to be a certain way, but it wasn't anything anything like that. And the big surprise, and you're alluding to this, is that it never stops. Yeah. I mean, you know, it just keeps on going and going and going. And it keeps getting, as you say, curiouser and curiouser. There is no end to the process. And we've got you know, 50 trillion synaptic interconnections, and if only 2% are, then that's a, still a trillion, to be wound wound. I mean, somehow, it gets, it keeps working it and working and working. The brain keeps, and there's neuro, neuro, neuroplastic, keeps rearranging itself as it finds better ways to operate. Right, and if, and I have found that, you know, because I then experiment with different different levels of practice mm -hmm. and so forth, saying, oh, you know, I don't I don't need to go and sit anymore, you know, I'm mm -hmm. feeling good, you know, and and that can last for months at a time, actually, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, actually, I don't think it, it's quite gone that long, but, and then, wham, you know, the same pattern will come back. Mm -hmm. So, I'm now much more in, uh, of the mindset that, like, infinite training, <laughs> mm -hmm. forever and ever, mm -hmm. amen, mm -hmm. that there's no end to uh, the opportunities for practice, let's put it that way, mm -hmm. um, and that anybody who is looking to awaken as the end of practice is probably not practicing. Yeah, well, <laughs> what I found too, even after 40 some years of practice and now over 30,000 hours, is that they, mon they manifest spontaneously. I, mean, I don't think up what today's practice is going to be. I sit down for my typical time early in the morning, four or five o'clock, and it just for two hours just does what it does. Mm -hmm. It can be a mix of all kinds of things: mm -hmm. um, you know, pranayama, meditation, asana, chanting, uh, just a whole bunch of bhakti practices, a whole bunch of things that I never would have imagined. In fact, I had, you know, decades ago, completely ruled out. I will never do this practice or that practice or that practice. <laughs> This is the one I find manifest yeah, now. Yeah. And they've turned out to be very useful and they've opened up parts of me that I didn't even know were parts. Right. So, you know, I, I wouldn't, I would be unfortunate if you didn't have practice. If, right. If you ruled it out, I think it's one of the problems with the Invitans, is to rule out practice, you rob yourself of a lot of opportunities to expand your understanding. It's just, and, and it's, uh, you know, as I said, curiouser and curiouser, yeah. is that it's an unbelievably engaging mm. process because of that unexpected quality that you alluded to. The teaching does not come where you expect it no. to come from. It, it comes from the most improbable series of events and the more we just open ourselves to allowing the teachings to come. And in fact I think that that's what those periods when I wasn't sitting were about. Mm -hmm. Like that was the practice then was to like here's what it's like if you get into a good space mm -hmm. and then you don't sit for a few days. Mm -hmm. right? Here's what it's going to be like. Mm -hmm. Teaching, mm -hmm. right? Opportunity. I wouldn't have had it any other way, right? Not that I could, but I wouldn't have it any other way because right. the more you just open yourself to what do I need to learn 
next cosmos, it manifests for you. And sometimes you say, wait, 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 I didn't, I didn't mean that. I'm serious, I'm serious. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I meant, you know, like good learning, you know, not like, you know, no, painful hard. learning. Painful well, you know, again, uh, you don't get to choose uh, the kind of learning and when it comes, and yeah. otherwise it wouldn't be unexpected. Well, Suzuki Roshi in his uh, great book, Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind, talks Love about it. mind weeds, yeah. about how much he cherished coming upon mind we yeah. and gave him the chance to uncover something new. Yeah. I think that, that's how it is. And I believe, you know, the brain's very parsimonious. It goes around looking for unused real estate, buildings that aren't being occupied anymore. Mm -hmm. And it finds one and asks basically, do you care about this? Mm -hmm. And you say no. And then and the brain tears it down <laughs> because the brain wants to use a real estate for something else. Right. And so this process goes on and goes on and goes on. And something will pop up that you hadn't thought about for decades. Oh, yeah. And it was like a third or fourth level concern at the time even. Yeah. And it now pops up. It's like, what? That's still out there? I know. It's amazing. <laughs> it's some weird textual fragment from exactly. your past some that, has, that comes to visit you yeah. over the span of 48 years, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know. Uh, I've had this, yeah, uh, yeah. and there's, they're not necessarily, you know, the, the, their power has almost nothing to do, it seems, with the content. It's just that they are in there, yeah. and then when they're released, yeah. you can feel it. It's like, uh, you know, you imagine something coming out of an egg and, and feeling the, uh, yeah. the parts of the egg fall off. You feel something shed, or a snake shedding its skin, you mm -hmm. know, just something just came off, something just dropped off. Yeah. One of the images that come to mind is remember the images from NASA uh, that you know that you'd have the uh, camera eye view on the rocket, mm -hmm. and then the stage would fall away oh, right? yeah, yeah. and burn. Right? You know, like, that's what it's like. Yeah. Every day, another stage falls that's away. Right. It keeps falling off. Yeah. yeah.